Welcome to this week's edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Shine. This is Mark Miller. And I almost knocked over your telestrator. That's right. Fella. Yeah. Hey, you know, one of the things we teach at high school sports is loyalty. Yes, You're we do. You're still wearing your Falcon stuff. I am. They need all the help and all the support they can get right now, especially this week facing yeah. the Rockets. The Rockets are having a great year. The Falcons are not. We'll leave it at that. There you go. All right. And we have a special fan, don't we? We do. Who tunes in to every yeah. one of the Closer Looks? Sean Bowley has not missed one yet. Right. And sometimes broadcast partner, or FCA district board member, we thank Sean for turning, uh, tuning in and, and probably hitting on that uh, uh, website enough yeah. times to build those hits up. Make over, it seem like people thousand. are interested. Yeah, over 1,000 yeah. to the first seven. So I've only watched it 990 times. Thank you to the people. Sean did the other. Yeah, the 10. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's get into last week's games, Mark. And first of all, I want to start with Finley and Lima Senior, a game that goes overtime. Uh, Finley comes into this game number one the track offensively, giving up 37.3 or scoring 37.3 points per game. The Spartans hold them to 21. One of the keys was Finley got inside the red zone three times in the first half, got two field goals and a touchdown. Instead of 21, they have 13. The Spartans with a big second half. They score in overtime to the Spartans, and they win this one. A big win for them, obviously, playoff ramifications and all that. Huge win for them. They held Stinson, the big running back from Finley, just 89 yards. They had been averaging the Trojans 252 yards rushing per game. They got just 97 this game against the Spartan defense, and defense is going to be one of the themes we're going to talk about as we go through the yep. show this evening. Right. Big win for the Spartans last week against Finley. All right, let's look at the game you and I did. St. Henry, 24 and a 17 in two overtimes. This was a great high school football game in a lot of ways, and we'll show you some of the other ways later. This keeps St. Henry at 4-1 and one in the hunt, especially with that cold water loss. Delphus uh, St. John's cold water fort recovery is the last three games of the year for St. Henry. Not an easy finish. Anna, 4-3 and three now. They have cold water and Minster in the last two weeks. So the MAC just keeps getting tougher, but a lot more teams got relevant with that cold water loss. St. Henry is one of them. Let's move to the NWCC, Riverside and USV. And my take, Mark, usually when you get an upset, it's because you defend it. You shut mm -hmm. somebody down, and that's what happened in this game. Riverside comes into the game averaging almost 38 points a game. If you take out just six that they had against Mechanicsburg, they're averaging 44 in their other six games. USV was giving up 31-plus points per game, but instead the Ram defense rose up in this game. They held Riverside to just 21. Big win for them. That sets up a lot of good games at the end of the year. They have Hard Northern, Fort Laramie, and Ridgemont left. They are currently eight this week. In their region, USV mm -hmm. has never made the playoffs. They're mm -hmm. on the cusp, and thanks to a good mm -hmm. defensive effort the other night against Riverside, they're right there. Well, you talk about upsets. Let's look at the biggest one of the week. Minster came into the game. Nobody giving them a chance to beat Coldwater, the undefeated number one team in the state, and they did in a big way, 33-18. to 18. This renews hope for the MAC title to Marion Local at 4-1, and, and that St. Henry team we just talked about at 4-1. They're tied now with Coldwater with one loss. Coldwater has Versailles, Anna, and Delphi St. John's left. Minster, New Bremen, Versailles, and Anna left. Playoff points abound in this league. We're hoping to get seven of them in this year. All right, let's move on to uh, kind of our stat stuffer thing. And usually, Mark, we do individuals. Uh -huh. This week we decided to focus a little bit on team defense because we've seen some outstanding defenses so far. And you've got some from the Western Buckeye League. Yeah, let's take a look at the Western Buckeye League. And Mark made this point early on. The top three teams are all 7-0, 6-0 in the league. And they are undoubtedly the top three defenses in that league, especially against the score. They all have two shutouts. OG has given up 53 points. That's barely over a touchdown and a PAT a game. Walpock, 10.3 points a game, and St. Mary's, 12.4 points a game. You say defense wins championships? That is case in point, because one of those teams is going to win the WBL this year. And they all play each other coming up. It's going to be a fun last weeks. couple of weeks. That's a fun thing, isn't it? All right, let's look at what's going on in the NWC defensively. And the top defensive effort last week was Crestview. Alan East loves to run the football. Uh, Crestview came in, held them to just 54 points in a 40-9 win. Um, only Grove and Spencerville, of course, those are two pretty good offensive teams mm -hmm. running the football, have rushed for more than 100 yards against Crestview's defense. Crestview has given up just 20 points per game in the first quarter all year long. Uh, and Jefferson, of course, has been solid defensively. We'll come back to that, too. Jefferson gives up just 77 points and 11 points total in the first quarter. I think they gave 20 to Coldwater, so 57 points in the rest of their games that they played. Solid defense from Jefferson. Again, the top team in the league defensively. Mm -hmm. Jefferson, top team 
uh, overall in conference as well. Let's go to the MAC and look at another one. Marion Local giving up 44 points all year long. The toughest defense in our area against the score. And if you think about it, they gave up 17 to Coldwater, 14 to Chaminade. Those are two really good teams. So 31 of the 44 points they gave up were in two games. They have three shutouts, are given 2.6 points, not even a field goal to the other five teams on their schedule. That is pretty good defense, and that'll win you a championship. Right now, they're tied for the championship in the WBL. And when you look at uh, six conferences, and in four of those conferences, the best defensive team is either at the top or tied for the league league. We've already talked about what's mm -hmm. happening in the NWC and the MAC and, and in the Western Buckeye League. BVC, Macomb has given up just 72 points. Mm -hmm. They're on top of their conference as well. In the track, Finley is still number one defensively, but only by four points over Toledo Central Catholic, who played a little bit tougher schedule. Mm -hmm. Central Catholic yep. did, so defense abounds there. In the Northwest Central Conference, Fort Laramie is first defensively, followed by Riverside and Sidney Lehman. So the teams that are top, once again, defensively, we like to watch offense, yeah. defense wins championships. Yep. Hard for me to admit, but it is true. <laughs> there you go. All right, our play of the week this week comes from that Anna Henry game, and we saw a really good sophomore linebacker. Boy, we really did. We're going to take a look here. Uh, let's circle them so you know which guy we're looking at. Right there, number 51 is Luke Cantrell. Watch him step up in, avoid the block of the fullback, and make a tackle for loss. We're going to show you another play because that's what inside backers have to do is tackle everything in front of them. But they also, the great ones, can run sideline to sideline. Take a look at him. He's in the same position. He's going to run, avoid a block, and look at the form tackle. We're going to see it again in slow motion. I want you to look at how he forms that up and makes that tackle right along the sideline. Lateral movement. There he goes. He's seeing him. See, he's not crossing over, he's shuffling those feet, boom, hits, drives, knocks him down. You know the really cool thing? Watch him help him up off the ground. Yep. Good sportsmanship. That is a good sophomore linebacker, Luke Cantrell. Yeah, we circled him because if, in fact, there is a second season of a closer look mm -hmm. and we get to the preview about upcoming players to look at, he's going to be one of them. He had a no really nice, yeah. nice football game yeah. the other night. Well, one thing we started doing is we started looking at nicknames for high school <laughs> and college football teams. We started having some fun with it because we realized that uh, the upper Soda Valley is the Rams, yeah. Roundhead, Alger, McGuffey. That's and cool. so we started, yeah, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really, so we started looking at high school nicknames. And we came up with some of our favorites. Now we know the Cleveland East, Tech, East Tech Scarabs, which is a dung beetle. Never quite follow. <laughs> why Never they knew make. what a scarab was. That, that's a dung beetle. Let's check mm -hmm. that one out. Well, okay, mm -hmm. we have the South Webster Jeeps. We covered them a few yes, years ago. Did. And that was not Jeeps as in the vehicle. It was a cart that they used to bring concession stands around the gym. Huh. So that's where the word Jeep came from. Uh, the Ottawa Hills Green Bears, not quite figured out where. Never seen a Green seen Bear. Seen a Green Bear. The Bellarmine Bells, obviously the John Glenn Little Muskies. One of my favorites, the East Liverpool Potters. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see them Blue play Holtz. against the, the Crooksville Ceramics <laughs> and see which one would win that one. See who gets but, busted first. Huh? Yeah, we got some, <laughs> <laughs> so we got some high school nicknames that are pretty cool out there. Oh, Around man. the country, in West Virginia, there's a town called Polka, and their football team is nicknamed the Dots. <laughs> so you can play for the Polka Dots if you're uh, there. The Belfry Montana Bats. All the kinds Belfry of Bats. Yeah, how about that one? And mm -hmm. one of my favorites from Illinois, the Cobbletown Corn Knockers. No, excuse me, Cobbleton Apple Knockers. Apple Knockers. I don't know what an Apple Knocker is, but it mm -hmm. sounds pretty good. And there's also a school yeah. in, in Illinois called the Polo Marcos. Oh, there you go. Okay. You've got some college. Well, you've you got a favorite one out well, of Putnam County. You would like to have I do. it named. I, I would like to see Kaleida change their nickname from Wildcats to the Scopes. <laughs> then it'd be the Kaleidoscopes. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, Mark gave me the college one, so let's right. fly down through this. The top five, Eagles. 76 teams in America have sports teams called the Eagles, then the Tigers, then the Bulldogs, then the Panthers. Tied for fifth are the Knights and the Lions. You know, nicknames should be mean and tough, right? Yeah. Well, here's some that aren't very threatening. We got the Lemmings, we got the Sugar Bears, and then Center College in Kentucky, they're called the Praying Colonels. And I guess that could be threatening if you're the State University <laughs> atheist. That might freak you out a little bit. But some play off their school name, like the uh, St. Bonaventure. Bonnies. Bonnies. Okay, yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense, right? Well, there's the Stetson Hatters. Hatters. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yep. The Whittier College in, Ca in California, they're called the Poets, and that's named after John Greenleaf Whittier, the, the poet. Pace University, New York City, they call themselves the Setters. Yes, they are the Pace, Pace Setters. Setters. Okay. And then some are geographically named, like where would you think the Nanooks are from? Alaska. Alaska, Alaska right. Fairbanks, right? Okay. Same with the Humpback Whales, University of Alaska. Yeah. University of New England, they're called the Nor'easters. And if you've ever been in a nor nor'easter, that really is threatening. Yeah. So that's a tough one. University of Massachusetts at Amherst, they're called the Minutemen. And they call their women's teams the Minute Women. 
All right, now that brings uh -huh. us up, up, up to right. another category, and that's different names for male and female teams. You know, we got to be politically correct now. Example, locally, UNOH racers and lady racers. Right. A lot of teams do that kind of thing. Let's look at St. Peter's College in New Jersey. They're the Peacocks. The girls are the Peahens, okay? St. Ambrose University, they're the Fighting Bees. I kind of like this one. The women are the Queen Bees. Oh, they're yeah, the Queens. That's, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Wyoming and Oklahoma State, they both are the Cowboys, right. so they naturally name their girls teams the Cowgirls. Right. Okay. Delta State, they're the statesmen. So what do you think their girls teams are? The states women? Mm. No, 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 no. They're the lady statesmen. I don't think they quite no, got that no, right. No, All right. No. Stephen F. Austin, they're the lumberjacks and the lady jacks. Northland College in Wisconsin, they're the lumberjacks, but they call their girls team the lumber jills. Oh, the right, jack yeah, and jills. Yeah, yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah. Just a few picked a color. Who's the orange? Syracuse. Syracuse. Andy Who's Lynch. the cardinal? Uh, Stanford. Stanford. They yeah. used to be the Indians. Another tree. The crimson is Tide. Harvard. Oh, oh okay. Harvard. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then some have two nicknames, two legal nicknames. The Eli's and the Bulldogs are Yale. Right. Georgia Tech is a Ramblin' Wreck, and they're the Yellow Jackets. And Virginia Tech, they're the Hokies. That's a totally made-up name. There's no such thing as a Hokie. They used to be the Gobblers, and that's why they have a turkey for a, a mascot. One has three names: Lehigh. They're the Brown and White. They're the Engineers, and they're the Mountain Hawks. And then I found an oxymoron. Wabash College in Indiana, they're the little giants. Yeah, so there's Fremont uh, Ross, Fremont right Ross, up the road. Yeah. My wife's alma mater. Yeah, I right, tell her you right. went to an oxymoron high school. Right. That's like calling yourself the jumbo shrimp, right. you know? And then some just don't make any sense at all, and these are the ones we like the best. University of Cal Irvine, they're the anteaters. Emory and Henry, they're the wasps. College of Atlantic, they call themselves the black flies. Shimer College is the flaming smelts. Now, you think that'd be a Northwest yeah, that, college? No, right. it's in Chicago. I don't, know. I don't know. Trinity Christian College Trolls. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be a troll. Right. North Carolina School of the Arts are the Fighting Pickles. Didn't make that up. And the one that we refer oh, to yeah. a lot around here, right. University of California at Santa Cruz is? Sammy the Banana Slugs. <laughs> the banana Slugs. <laughs> yeah. Rah, rah, slugs. But our favorite is? Oh, it is. Ohio University Chillicothe. Yeah. Okay, they're the Hilltoppers, but if you look on their shirt, O-U Chillicothe is O-U-C-H on the front of their jersey that says, ouch. ouch. I would go to a school where it's ouch. And we have a mascot right here on staff, Ben Reif, who was at uh, Xavier University. Ben was uh, D'Artagnan. Oh, yeah. And he was also the Blue Blob, and so we'll get a couple pictures of Ben here. And there's the Blue Blob, yeah. and so this is one of those schools with a couple of mascots. There's a Blue Blob. And, uh, Our fearless Joseph. sports director, 2008. He was a senior, and he uh, did that uniform proud. There we go. And we, congratulations to Ben. Did a great yep. job with that. All right. Bright spots this week, Mark. We were at Anna, and we thought the atmosphere oh. there was outstanding. A yeah. couple of reasons why. First of all, if you just look at the facility, the stands are full, and then they have around there kind of a hill build up. You can yep. see the full stands right there. But if you look in the background, the people bring their lawn yeah. chairs and sit on a hill inside the stadium. They walk through the neighborhood carrying their lawn chairs, and they fill it. Look at that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really great. And also, because it sits right next to a railroad track, and you commented to me, here comes the train There's during the, train. the game. happened multiple times. Yeah. But a lot of stadiums are built near railroad tracks. Yeah because it's land that nobody wants to build on. They don't yeah. want to hear that. Now, a train did stop. This is one taking off going the other way. It stopped and watched the game watched for a while. Game. And the people kind of cheered when it left, so it must be kind of a tradition. And then the other thing that we really liked is we like to check out the fair, yeah. you know? So we went to the grill, and we found ourselves a rocket dog. Right. And there's a picture of the rocket dog with all the fixings shortly yeah. before Ben Reif scarfed it down. And yeah. we want to thank Dave Bell the Anna Loyalist that bought us each a rocket dog. You know, the next day I went to Capitol and saw Ohio Northern play Capitol, and there was Dave Bell and his Anna stuff. No. He was there to see Christian Williams play, a former oh, yeah. Anna football team. So thanks, Dave, for the rocket dogs. They were yeah. really, really good. But one of the best atmospheres I've been in in a it long, is. long yeah. time, Anna High School football. And, and we really like those small town high school mm. football and basketball venues, and, and that's great yeah. for us. All right. This week's Where Are They Now? Mark Miller, you have this one. Hey, let's look at Mike Elston. Mike went to St. Mary's. He was there from 89 to 92. He's a running back, defensive back, and a kick returner, and a big one in all three of those positions. His teams were 47 and 4. They won four WBL championships, two Division II state championships, and as a sophomore in 1990, he took an interception 90 yards for a touchdown, a state record. He also played basketball his senior year. They went to the state tournament, finished 21 and 6. He played for the legendary Skip Boffman, who retired not long yeah. after Mike Elston left. Smart man, Skip. 
And then he went to Michigan, was an outside linebacker, lettered three times between 93 and 96, played for Gary Moeller and Lloyd Carr. He is in his 20th year of coaching, started out at Michigan, went to Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan, and that's where he hooked up with Brian Kelly, right. followed Brian to Cincinnati. And now at Notre Dame, he coaches the linebackers and is the recruiting coordinator, wife Beth, three daughters, Olivia, Sophia, Isabella. I remember watching him play in high school. Oh. He was special. He and really a was. Really, really good coach today. Mike yeah. Elston. Wonder if he dried out from that game in North Carolina Ooh, State last week. That was, that was unfortunate. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on quickly to our upcoming games uh, that we're going to have this week. First of all, big game in the NWCC. That's Fort Laramie and Layman match up this week. Now, uh, Fort Laramie's three and one in conference play. Layman is four and zero. Whit Parks, who has coached everywhere, been very <laughs> successful. Dick Roll has been very close successful at Layman. So we got a big match up this week. Layman has won at least five games every year they've had a program, and they have been in the playoffs every year since 2009. Um, big game for them. Obviously, Layman wants to continue on and win their league championship. They think they need at least seven, perhaps eight wins to get in the playoff at Layman. They're five and two right now. They have 14 playoff appearances, including three in a row. They've been in the playoffs 10 times in the 2000s. Big matchup this week, not only for league rights, but also for playoff points. Let's look at the BVC. Van Buren comes in at 5-2, and 4-1. and one. They're going to play Macomb, 6-1, and 5-0. and oh. Of course, Macomb and Liberty Benton in Week 10 yeah. might have something to say about that championship, but the one loss, Liberty Benton, Arlington, and Lipsick all have one loss. They're certainly pulling for Van Buren in this game because they'll get back in the hunt with a Macomb loss. All right, Liberty Benton, Tim Nichols in his 10th year. They're 5-2, and 4-1. and one. They're going to play Arlington this week. Josh McGrain, his team is at, uh, also 5-2, five, 4-1. Five and two, four and one. Big offensive displays by both teams. The quarterback, Austin May for Liberty Benton, he's rushed for nine touchdowns, thrown for nine touchdowns. He's thrown just one interception in 120 attempts. Big game for them. On the other side, Arlington, they're more balanced. Devin Plunkett, five touchdowns. Gage Beck, seven touchdowns. Matt Crawford has thrown for five touchdowns. A little bit more balanced. Logan Spire, the Miami recruit from Arlington, leads the conference with 19 tackles for loss. Clay Lenhart from Liberty Benton leads the conference in overall in tackles with 101 tackles through seven games. Big game in their conference, and you mentioned upcoming games for them as well. WBL, we've been talking about those three undefeateds. Two of them play this week. OG, 7-0, 6-0 at Walpock, same record. Should be a defensive battle because they're two of the top defensive teams. Maybe a low-scoring game. OG pass versus the Walpock run. That's kind of the way it looks on paper. St. Mary's also in there at 7-0, 6-0. And in week 9, Wapuck goes to St. Mary's. Week 10, OG at St. Mary's. And what's that tell you? St. Mary's has home field advantage. Also want to congratulate Wapuck on winning their 32nd straight WBL uh, game. That is a record. How about that? That's phenomenal. And on to our broadcast schedule for this week. We have Crestview at Jefferson this week. You and I will be Marion Local at Fort Recovery. The Bath Wildcats go to Shawnee. And uh, LB and Grove play this weekend as well. So uh, we've got big games coming up. So we actually have Liberty Benton in Arlington this week. Uh, my mistake on reading that. A lot of big games this week. The weather should be nice and it starts to cool down a little bit towards the end of the week. Get out and catch a high school football game this week. You've been watching a closer look on WOSN.